The tree is adorned with ornaments bright. If your holiday gifts have been quite enough, a Lone Star Chris Kringle still has more stuff. Unwrap that box labeled number 22. Emmett Smith with the football is another gift for you. He scored 24 touchdowns in the Super Bowl drive. It's an NFL record if he gets 25. Tonight, you'll be getting a true football feast. The Cowboys are champs of the NFC East. Troy Aikman, with his star so bright, will lead the Cowboys' offense tonight. Doesn't that aid look like a snowman? Will a big game tonight be a Super Bowl omen? Yesterday, the Cowboys got some gifts of their own. The Eagles and Niners had opportunities blown. When Troy throws the ball, it often comes down in the hands of Michael Irvin for a Dallas touchdown. 106 catches should make you a believer. Another Pro Bowl awaits this great receiver. Tonight they will play for your eyes to see for home field advantage in the old NFC. These Christmas goodies should give you a reason to watch this final game of the regular season. Arizona Cardinals are the Cowboys' next test as St. Nick begins a well-deserved rest. Santa's job's done, his year is complete. Now he can watch these teams compete. Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona on a beautiful night for football. Temperature in the mid-50s, little or no wind, just an absolutely beautiful night here in Tempe, just outside of Phoenix. So, hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Happy you're with us as we close out our 26th season of Monday Night Football here on ABC. And I know I speak for Al and Dan and all the rest of us on the Monday Night Football crew. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and the happiest of holidays. Not a happy holiday, of course, for the Cardinals. The Cardinals come into tonight at 4-11. and 11. This is their final game of the season. They are playing for pride tonight and a chance to derail the Cowboys in their hopes to have the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And that, of course, is a scenario that developed yesterday when the 49ers lost to Atlanta 28-27. to And Al, the Dallas Cowboys were flying about 35,000 feet on the way to Phoenix when they heard that score and they knew that this game no longer was meaningless. The veterans were not going to sit down. This was a different football team. They win tonight. They have the home field advantage as long as they're in the playoffs. Great present now. All they have to do is take advantage of it. One thing about the Cowboys, they're America's team. They're also the best soap opera in football year after year. This year, no exception. From opening night when Jerry Jones got the rest of the league crazy with a Nike deal to Deion Sanders' $35 million contract to the fourth down disaster in Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago, this team has always been in the headlines. When we saw them Labor Day night, week one, they were sensational. Killed the Giants, 35-0. We saw them on a Monday night in November, the first Monday of November against Philadelphia. They destroyed the Eagles and were anointed by just about everyone as the Super Bowl champions. But they've struggled since then. Still with a win tonight, they will wrap up the regular season with the best record in the NFC and the road to the Super Bowl will go through Dallas. But I think it's not only important for Dallas to win tonight, but to win somewhat convincingly to get their confidence level back where it was about a month ago. And tonight they take on the Arizona Cardinals with a mark of 4-11 and in the stadium, Dan, that looks vaguely familiar, but when's the last time we were here? It's been a while, Al. Uh, <laughs> September of 1988, I think, was the last time the three of us made a visit here to Tempe, Arizona. That was the Cardinals' first year here in the Valley of the Sun, and there's not been a great deal of success since they have been here. This team... This franchise has not had a winning season and since 1984 when they went 9-7. and seven. And Buddy Ryan is right now an embattled coach. He proclaimed there's a winner in town when he got here two years ago, and it has not happened yet. They came close last year at 8-8. Eight and eight. A lot of uh, forecasts had this club making a serious run for the playoffs here in 95. Injuries have just slaughtered this ball club. Buddy hasn't been able to hold it together. And what they do here tonight may have some bearing as to whether or not he's able to hold on to his job. And, of course, a formidable opponent is on hand. That's the Dallas Cowboys and their coach. Barry Switzer's down on field right now with Arlen Swan. Thank you very much, Dan. Barry, when you were flying in the Phoenix, you didn't think you'd be playing for home field advantage throughout the playoffs. How has it changed the attitude and your approach to this game? Well, first of all, I'm not going to be asking questions after tonight about uh, how much we play Emmett and Troy, was, how much they play, do we think about resting. They're going to play 60 minutes. They're going to extend themselves. Anything can happen in football. You play this season, it's a long season. Ask Philadelphia. Ask San Francisco. It's hard to win on the road. Our team knows that's going to be a tough game tonight. We know what separates it. We know you have some injuries. Jay Novacek is not here. Eric Bjornsson is going to play for you. His first start at tight end. 
How is he going to be a factor in well, this ball game? Well, he has tremendous potential. We brought him here to be a Novacek for us. We didn't know that he's going to have to be tonight. Uh, hopefully, he'll play like Jay. We missed several of them, uh, but we got guys who got to step up and they got to play. Barry, thank you very you much. Al, it's like this team got a shot of vitamin B12 and uh, ammonia capsule. The Nostal players, they want this one really bad. And Lynn, no matter what happens, they have next week off, and then they will go home if they win tonight and meet either Atlanta, Detroit, or Philadelphia in the second round of the playoffs. That's Kevin Williams dropping back deep. Greg Davis kicks off for the Cardinals, and the final game of the regular season is underway. Kevin Williams from inside the 10 brings it back out to the 33-yard line. Andre Waters tackles him there. And let's take a look at the Dallas Cowboys. Despite a gimpy knee, despite a calf that's bothered him a good part of the season, Troy Aikman's had a fine year. He's thrown only six interceptions in 400 passes. The great Emmett Smith with Moose Johnston in the backfield. Irvin and Williams, the wideouts, and the aforementioned Bjornsson, the rookie tight end. Two and a Newton, Kennard, Allen, and Williams, the offensive front. Jay Novacek, arthroscopic knee surgery, but up walking yesterday, a day after the surgery, they do expect him back in two weeks. From the 34. Aikman to the air with good protection, but the pass a little low for Moose Johnston, an incomplete. Garth Jacks was covering on the play. Now the Cardinal defense playing better of late. Bankston, Eric Swan emerging as a star. Wilson and Clyde Simmons, the ex-Eagle. Irving, Eric Hill, a vastly underrated backer who doesn't get nearly the publicity he deserves, and Jacks on the outside. Aeneas Williams goes to the Pro Bowl. Lance Brown is a rookie. Seth Joyner, the one-time linebacker, now a strong safety, and Brent Alexander, the free safety. Second down and 10. And they flank Moose Johnston to the left, leaves Smith alone in the backfield, and the pass through the hands of Kevin Williams, an incomplete. Kevin Williams, who had a huge reception last week against the Giants on a third and 10 to keep the game-winning drive alive probably his best game of the season he has not been what they expected he would be over the year but he really had a fine game against the Giants kept that drive alive he had five receptions in all last week and they came on third downs when they were so important so well, certainly he figures in heavily tonight in their play action plan certainly the matchup they were looking for Frank getting Williams locked up on Seth Joyner a linebacker trying to play in the secondary that that favors Dallas if only Williams holds onto the ball Third and ten, the Cardinals with a seven-man front. And the pass is caught by Williams in Arizona territory. And a first down to the 36-yard line. Kevin Williams becoming Mr. Third and ten. Tackled by Brent Alexander. That's a 30-yard game. Blitz by the Cardinals and picked up quickly by Troy Aikman, Michael Irving. Getting double coverage on a blitz. That means that Kevin Williams is going to run free in the secondary. And that's exactly what happened. There's a little deal up front for the Cardinals. Here is Kevin Williams in the gap, hit the hole, and a good read by Troy Aikman and a great delivery. Last week, Aikman with five completions on third down and 10 or more. And now Emmett Smith goes nowhere on his first carry of the night. Emmett has already won the rushing title. Clyde Simmons, a familiar foe, stops him. No, but a chance for Emmett Smith tonight to to break an NFL record for touchdowns scored in a season. Right now, he's tied with the mark that John Riggins set a number of years ago. And tonight, Emmett Smith has a chance with just one rushing touchdown to make that record his and his alone. And needs nine yards for his best season ever. Second and ten. With Johnston in motion. Providing the blocking for Emmett Smith, who's inside the 30 and takes it to the 25-yard line in the first down as Alexander makes the tackle. 12-yard gain. Buddy Ryan walking the sidelines. He calls the defenses for the Cardinals. That's his. He is the ace at that. They go with the famed 46 defense. And the Cowboys have had success with it. They have won 10 times in consecutive games against these Cardinals, and that has got to really get to Buddy Ryan. He is a great competitor. Ryan, when he was at Philadelphia, at 1.17 straight over the Landry and Johnson Cowboys. Aikman on first down, hits Williams. Nice spin move, and Kevin Williams with a touchdown. 
He ran around Lance Brown like Brown was a rookie, and he is. Uh, and again, double coverage over on the other side against Michael Irvin. And Buddy Ryan taking the chance, taking Irvin out of the play if he can. But that leaves Kevin Williams all alone locked up with Lance Brown and Williams with a little head fake like he was going to take a deep broke to the sidelines and an easy six for the Dallas Cowboys. What a fine looking drive. Well, it, it, it's tough to get juked any worse than this as a corner. A little bit of a slip, but the move to the outside by Williams and then what makes it so effective is that he he fights his own momentum to go back to the middle of the field. So that's uh, We'll credit some of that to poor tackling in the secondary, but uh, give Kevin Williams his due. It was a fine move back to the middle of the field after the catch. Williams' first touchdown of the season. 2.22 into the game, 7 to nothing, Cowboys. Closely the reaction of Troy Aikman when he sees that this pass to Kevin Williams is a touchdown. Not a smile, not even a flicker of happiness. Troy Aikman's been quoted as saying that you know, a lot of the joy is gone from this game. There's so much pressure on the Dallas Cowboys to win that a lot of the spontaneity, the fun, has been removed from this game. And Frank, looking at him right there, I, I believe it. And when has 11 and 4 team ever taken as much abuse from their home fans as this team has, really? Here's Chris Boniel's kick. LaShawn Johnson from the 12 and gets ripped at the 22-yard line. The tackle made by Dominique Ross just activated a rookie running back from Valdosta State and well whatever emotion is lacking in the uh, in the uh, reaction of Aikman is more than made up for by Joe Efezano the special teams coach a look at Dave Craig so many years at Seattle then to Kansas City and then Detroit and now in his first season in Arizona Garrison Hurst and Larry Sanders in the backfield Moore and Sanders the wideouts McBride the tight end and the guys up front Tharp Love Cunningham Redmond and Selby Garrison Hurst has already rushed for over a thousand yards this season. Third year out of Georgia. Dave Craig retreats, swings one out. That's the 90th catch of the season made by Larry Centers. And he's tackled at the 25 by Darren Woodson, who played his college ball here at Arizona State. Now Dallas defensively banged up up front because Charles Haley had back surgery. He's gone. Russell Maryland inactive. Tolbert Hennings. Let moves back to the middle and Carver who played his college ball here. Edwards, Miles for the injured Robert Jones and Darren Smith of the backers. The corners are Sanders and Brown. The safeties are Marion and Woodson. Second and eight from the 25 yard line. First picks up about four up to the 29 yard line. And it will be third down and three. Monday Night Football being brought to you by Bud Light, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team, make it a Bud Light. Pennzoil, the motor oil that works like liquid ball bearings. And the all-new Ford Taurus, a look you've never seen from a name you know well. Buddy Ryan, head coach at Philly for five years, now at the end of his second year, and a four-year contract with the Cardinals. Two to go. Third down and three. Out of the gun. Craig survey. for a touchdown. One Dave Craig should never have released. He has had great days, a streaky quarterback, and he has had bad days. This one is not starting off good. 20th interception of the season thrown by Dave Craig. Little roll looking for out of protection, put right into the hands of Marion. Thirty one yard return. That's the sixth interception of the season for Marion and for Brock his first NFL touchdown the first of his career. Now Chris Bonio out of the hold of John Jett normally Novacek holds but tonight it's Jett and we've not played four minutes and it's been a very Merry Christmas thus far for Dallas 14 nothing. Dave Craig spent a dozen years in Seattle, then went to Kansas City for two years. Detroit last year played very well in place of the injured Scott Mitchell, came here and uh, throws an interception that <laughs> you wouldn't see a rookie throw for the most part. 
Boniol to LaShawn Johnson. And he's tackling the 29. A lot of speculation about Barry Switzer. I asked Jerry Jones before the game if Switzer is back next year unconditionally as the Cowboys coach. Yes, he does. And uh, uh, Barry is uh, actually uh, has engaged not only our, our staff, but our players. Uh, don't pay any attention to uh, any talk you hear when we've lost two in a row or basically it looks like we've got all the talent in the world but uh, may not get home field advantage. Those are the kinds of things I think you expect. He's a tough guy. He wouldn't have the job if he wasn't tough. He was put in a tough position when he came in to coach behind Jimmy Johnson. I'm tickled with the job he's doing, and uh, we're looking forward to hopefully some success in this playoff. Dave Craig has to eat the ball and takes a yard loss. So a lot of people speculated when, as you look at Jerry Jones, Jerry said he'd accept nothing less than a trip to the Super Bowl. He said right there, Barry Switzer, regardless, comes back next year as the coach. And I don't, uh, I don't think that Jerry Jones has changed his tune one iota from the very beginning. I don't think he's wavered at no. all from the very beginning. Uh, he has he's made it clear. He made it perfectly clear. Barry is my man, and I am dancing with the guy who brought him. One of 12 and 4 a year ago, and he's 11 and 4, getting ready to go 12 and 4 tonight. Not bad. Second and 12. And Garrison Hurst over right guard up to the 32 yard line. He's tackled there by Tolbert. Yes, so you're down an eight. If you start out throwing the football, you throw an interception that kills you against a team that gave up. 244 yards rushing last week to the Giants. Rodney Hampton, 187 yards, and you put the ball up two of your first plays from scrimmage. You kind of wonder, uh, did they watch last week's game? Uh, this is a Dallas team that is weak against the run because of the injuries you talked about, Al, and uh, that's probably where the Cardinals should be concentrating. Four receivers set, third down and eight from the 32-yard line. Craig takes a shovel pass and then throws incomplete intended for Stevie Anderson with Bailey covering on the play and the Cardinals will punt. Well this is a ball club with only four wins that uh, if Buddy Ryan comes back as coach next year they have to make some personnel decisions and I'm not so sure if we were to put Buddy on camera right now that Dave Craig would get the glowing endorsement that uh, that Barry Switzer got from Jerry Jones. Uh, well out in front of the receiver. You can't lay it all on Dave Craig, but you certainly do that interception. He has put his team in a hole, but next year is going to be his 17th year in the league. How long can you go with a guy that age? It's a it's a huge question here in Arizona. Jeff Beagle is the Pro Bowl punter. Sends one down. Fair caught by Kevin Williams. A 42-yard boot. Cowboys have it again. Playoffs begin Saturday, and the first two games right here on ABC, a doubleheader coming your way. Miami against Buffalo. Great matchup in the AFC beginning early Saturday, and then following that, we will be in Philadelphia. The Lions, the Red Hot Lions, against the Philadelphia Eagles. Wild card Saturday right here on ABC. 14 to nothing, Dallas. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Aikman throwing incomplete. Michael Irvin, the intended receiver, Lance Brown covering. And Barry Switzer may have every wish come true tonight. If Dallas can blow Arizona out, he'll have a victory in hand, and he can then rest his regulars in the second half, something he would have done had this game meant nothing. He talked about the fact that, that Emmett Smith would not have seen a lot of work tonight. He, he would have brought him in, though, if they got the ball in a goal line situation to give him a shot at, at getting that single season touchdown record. But you're right, they're, they're being afforded a pretty good opportunity here by the Cardinals. Emmett Smith runs right into Garth Jacks. Tackle for no gain, third down and 10. Boy, Garth Jacks is a guy who'll bring it to you. You know, he's been around the year for 10, around the league for 10 years, and a lot of special teams play, and when he was in Dallas, he was a fixture on their short yardage situation. And one of the things you can always count on is that he'll put a hat on the ball carrier if he can get to him. This is one of the one of the hard hitting guys in this league and a real popular guy around the locker room. Kind of a player that uh, the Buddy Ryans of the world really like. Third down and 10. 8.45 remaining in the opening quarter. And the Cardinals come across the line and there's no whistle, even though it appeared that the, one of them was unabated. Keith McCann's coming across the line, but Dick Hantack and the crew not whistling the play dead. 
And he's dropped back at the 18 yard line pending the penalty call. The flags came so early you thought you would hear the whistle that usually accompanies that and we didn't. Well you got the tight end for the Cowboys leaving. He, go, he goes out of his stance early as well. Neutral zone violation on the defense. Five yard penalty prior to the snap. Still third down. Yeah they're going to say that uh, and what Dick Hantak is saying is that the movement by the defense caused Derek Bjornsson the tight end to to break out of his stance and that's a new rule that the, the league has put in and it really is a big plus to the guys on offense. Eric uh, being congratulated for uh, not being in the doghouse. Eric, the Look at the very Washington. top of your screen the very top. There's Bjornsson as he reacts to the defense jumping and breaks from his stance. Well he's in some big shoes tonight filling in for the injured Jay Novacek. And they expect a lot of him. He was a wide receiver in Washington. He has bulked up a little bit, 6'4", 235 pounds. And while well, he is not a Jay Novacek yet, they brought him in to be one. And he's shown some spectacular possibilities. Third down and five, Dallas from its own 33-yard line. Aikman, the short drop, and then hits Michael Irvin. And one pro bowler is run out by another, Aeneas Williams, with the stop up at the 39, but Irvin has a first down. Even though they double Michael Irvin, they are still able to get the ball to him there. They had Williams on him. They had a, a deep man dropping from the secondary, and they continue to go with single coverage on Kevin Williams. Williams taking the outside position. He knows he's got help on the inside. Yet they were able to get the completion. Williams in motion. Emmett Smith through the middle and Emmett tackled up at the 42-yard line. You know, we've got Pro Bowl matchups all over the field here. There we've got Irvin and Williams. We've got a wonderful matchup in the interior line between that man, Eric Swan, going against Larry Allen. Both of these guys, first time Pro Bowl selections this year. Both of them young and uh, in their physical primes. And uh, these are two of the young bulls locking horns here on the line of scrimmage. This is fun. This is fun to watch. Second and eight at the 42. The conventional four man rush and that's good enough with Clyde Simmons sacking Aikman at the 36 yard line. Former Philadelphia Eagle played for Buddy Ryan. The last few weeks he has really exploded. That's his 10th sack of the season and he has just been superb over the past few weeks. A strong pass rusher from the outside. Mark two and a jumps up towards the line of scrimmage and really is in no position to defend an upfield rush by Clyde Simmons. I don't know if that was some type of miscommunication. Two and a uh, taking a, a, a really bizarre technique to try to block him on a on a passing play. Simmons sacked Aikman four and a half times in one game in 1990 when Clyde was a Philly. Third and 14 and Troy under pressure but gets it off to Michael Irvin who makes the catch in front of Aeneas Williams. That time Buddy Ryan said everybody that a typical move on Buddy Ryan third and long yardage and the blitz was on from Terry Hogue, the safety, all the linebackers were coming. That automatically locks Michael Irvin up in single coverage, and it was a good read by both Irvin and Aikman. Aikman knew per, he was going to get popped, and this is kind of buddy. It's uh, Terry Hogue, the safety, that gets to him, but this is what you know you're going to have to take these pops with a Buddy Ryan defense. They bring everybody, and you will never have enough to pick them all up. 16 yard gain, and now they go back to Emmett Smith. And the blocking breaks down as Emmett gets to the 45-yard line. And Dan, Emmett is not breaking as many long runs as he did early in the season. No, and, and a lot of it is being uh, laid at the doorstep of the offensive line. You know, they lost a lot when they lost Ray Donaldson, their very talented center, uh, who was voted to the Pro Bowl and who broke his leg Thanksgiving. Uh, Derek Kennard has is, is really filled in pretty well at center. But this is an offensive line that two years ago dominated everybody they are not dominating everybody now they're still really good but they're not nearly as dominating as they used to be second and seven and around Williams and that's a first down as he gets tripped up at the 31 yard line by Lance Brown that's a good call the Cardinals a tough pursuing defense 
and Kevin Williams with a good move to break this back to the inside. Watch this. It was Clyde Simmons on the outside. He saw it coming all the way. Kevin Williams took it to the inside, picks up the yardage for the first down. Outstanding block by Derek Kennard, the center, who went back and actually got two Arizona Cardinals, putting both of them on the ground. Ninth play of the drive, five minutes left in the first quarter. Dallas leading 14 to nothing. Aikman guns one right between the eights of Michael Irvin and very close to a first down. And he has one at the 20-yard line. Well, if you were a doctor writing a prescription for the Dallas Cowboys, I don't know that you could fill one out much better than what they're getting so far. Good quality play from their number one people, pinpoint passing by Aikman. Good solid running game. It's all working pretty well for the Dallas Cowboys, and I guess the doctor just wrote a new prescription. He said, let's play Deion Sanders at wide receiver. And he flanks wide right. Aikman is 5 of 8 for 90 yards. Seth Joyner lines up facing Sanders. That is Emmett Smith picks up a couple. That is the worst matchup I have ever seen. Speaking of prescriptions, by a, that's exactly right. The doctor who wrote that matchup for the Cardinals was into the old drug case, I think. How do you put Seth Joyner, a linebacker who's filling in at safety, locked in man coverage with the fastest man in the NFL? Well, Seth Joyner is a good athlete. I, uh, I had him as superstars. I know you Not did too, good. man. But you put him against Deion Sanders. He obviously was going to have help on the inside. But this guy's got Woo! some speed. It just blow by it. Well, Deion says, give me that one again. Second down and eight. Aikman off the play fake. The deep drop. And then has nobody open. Moose Johnston, uh, the closest receiver. Pressure put on by Keith McCain. So it'll be third and eight. The second time they tried to get the ball to Daryl Johnston. Uh, you know, if uh, if you'd have said coming into this game, I'm going to buy a ticket because I want to see the uh, Pro Bowl fullback in action, uh, you'd have been right. It's just that that Pro Bowl fullback is Larry Centers of the uh, Arizona Cardinals, uh, who beat out Daryl Johnston uh, in the balloting this year to go to Honolulu. Johnston had been there the previous two years. That guy this year, Larry Centers, wins uh, his first Pro Bowl assignment. Third down and eight at the 18-yard line. Cowboys are three of three on third down. Fumble. fumble and a sack by Simmons and a loose ball and Dallas's ball. The Cowboys How? maintain possession. How do the Cardinals not get possession of that football? There's a, one of their guys on the ground had it. He landed on the ball and had it. It just came out and Kennard was right there and he plopped right on top of it. That's... That's why you win four games when when breaks like that continue to go against you. Dallas had been the only team not to have a fumble on a quarterback sack this season until now. That's Keith. No, that's Bankston. Bankston has the ball and, and just can't control it. 39 yard attempt by Boniol with a new holder jet. And this is the 23rd in a row for Boniol. He's missed only one all season in week three. The new holder jet who held in college at East Carolina right there. Spots it perfectly, 2.42 left in the period, 17-0, Big D. you ever saw you would even say it We're back. Hello. <laughs> Hello again, everyone. 17-0 with 2.42 to go in the opening quarter. Chris Boniol to kick off for Dallas. And it's taken to the 10-yard line by LaShawn Johnson, who had a spectacular college career at Northern Illinois. And he runs it back up to the 38-yard line where Brock Marion makes the tackle. Cardinals try to climb back in it. Two and a half to go in the quarter. 17-0 Cowboys. So let's have, we'll have the Dannys and the Frankies and the Alfalfas. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your MVP and your coach of the year? Coach of the year is Marty Schottenheim. I don't, uh, he's my pick. How about you? Uh, it, it'd be hard to go beyond him. I like Ray Rhodes. Ray Rhodes came in a yeah. tough situation, and he's taken a lot of people that really, I didn't think could play as well as they did, and he's turned into that quite a football team. I'm going to go with Wayne Fonts, the way he uh, finished the season. Give me some sugar. Yeah, yeah the chance in Detroit now is Wayne must stay. 38-yard line, Garrison Hurst picks up about four. Who's your MVP, Dan? 
Well, if you're going to go, I, I, I'll just pick a guy that you might, but uh, who's single-handedly picked up a team, I think, and propelled them into the playoffs. It would be uh, Scott Mitchell of the Detroit Lions, who, who his play, I think, has has put his team into the playoffs. So he played better than he thought he would. Yeah, uh, I got to go. Brett Favre of Green Bay. He's had a, a remarkable season. He is the yep. Packer offense. Yep. You can make the same argument. You're right. Despite the fact he had a better first half and second half, I still like Emmitt Smith. I think to me he he is so valuable to this team, and I don't know where Dallas would be without him. As Garrison Hurst takes it up to the 46. As usual, we're all in sync. <laughs> we're just trying to be different. Hey, Cover could, the globe. It's you, 17 to nothing. You bet. <laughs> Early, you can tell that we have thought long and hard about that. And honorable mention to Jerry Rice. I mean, you, you know, the thing with Jerry is you, you just take him for granted. So Isn't that the truth? Yeah. It's you know, didn't he pop into my mind what a remarkable yeah. year he's had? Yep. Of course, he could win it every year. Lifetime Achievement Award. You know, a guy that, uh, you know, you talk about Jerry Rice and, and, and Irvin and Herman Moore. Right after this play, somebody needs to be mentioned here. Third down and three from the 46-yard line. Play. And that's picked off at the 34-yard line by Larry Brown, who takes it to the Arizona 48-yard line. Boy, Craig found another open cowboy. Second pick of the night. Ryan muttering and mumbling. And the Poos are cascading down, and Jim Hart's going to ask for his number 17 back. A sixth <laughs> interception for Larry Brown. But another ball. I don't know. I don't know what Craig is looking at here. Uh, this is receiver let up on him. Uh, <laughs> Brown was the only one open. Of course, you go back and consider Craig has been sacked 50 times this year. Uh, maybe that makes you just a little antsy back here. Both picks tonight on third and three. And the Cowboys first down from the 48. And then it's Smith. Oh, oh, oh. And picks up four. Taken down at the 44-yard line by Michael here. Bankston. The Goodyear Blimp Eagle has made its way over from Torrance, California, about 350 miles away. And Hovers high above Sun Devil Stadium, which will be the side of the Super Bowl next month. Joel Chamberlain at the controls on this beautiful late December night. Christmas January uh, January 28th, the uh, mm -hmm. date of Super Bowl 30. Dion. And the Cardinals' coverage is unorganized. Dion back in there offensively as the pass is swung out to... Emmett Smith and a nice tackle made there by Terry Irving, standing right with him and stopping him for a loss. That uh, was uh, that was actually a lateral or very close to it from Aikman back to uh, Emmett Smith. It looks and, we, a little, it, it and looks that little, was Joiner again on on uh, Dion. It looks a little crazed, but there's always some kind of uh, sort of brilliant madness to a Buddy Ryan defense. He, there was a lot of help to the inside. Now Troy Aikman wanted to go there. He couldn't do there. He was. He was forced to throw that ball to Emma Smith. So it looked sloppy, but it worked. Cowboys leading 17-0. Monday Night Football back after this message and a word for EBC Station. Defense rests, and the offense starts the second quarter with a third down and 11 at the Cardinal 29. That was up 17 to nothing. Aikman running for a first down and slides to a halt at the 37-yard line. Great. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Lynn Swan on this Christmas night at Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. The first quarter numbers, not very pretty on the Phoenix side. First D, one turnover, an instant touchdown. And the second one, already within relatively yeah. Close to field goal range. Not a strong number in the passing department for the Cardinals. <laughs> no. A big zero. First and ten at the 37-yard line. And it's Smith. And he works inside the 35. Gains a little more than three. Terry Irving makes the stop. Youngest players to score 100 touchdowns, and that's where Emmett goes tonight with one. Emmett is 26 years, seven months old, so by two years he would be the youngest. Brown was the youngest. Jerry Rice, Walter Payton, Lenny Moore, and Don Hudson all in their 30s when they went into triple figures. And of course, 
that next touchdown will also set a National Football League record. It will be number 25. Second down and seven. And Smith picks up only a half a yard or so. Seth Joyner making the head. You know, a while ago I was talking and derailed by Dave Craig's interception. We were talking about Rice and Irvin. How about Isaac Bruce of the Rams? 1,791 yards, 119 receptions. That yardage figure, the second best in NFL history, that has to be the best year anybody ever had who didn't go to the Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stop and think about it. Yeah, he you did. know, with Carter and Moore and Irvin and Rice, he has a year like that, and, and, and he's watching uh, our rendition of the Pro Bowl on ABC. Definitely in the Raw Conference. Third down and seven, and the catch is not made, dropped by Corey Fleming. About the only imperfect thing Dallas has done in the game thus far. Oh, and Fleming knows that that ball was right in his hands. He would have had a first down, and as it turns out, the Cowboys not within Bonio's field goal range, so they bring out the punting unit. So they have something that they've worked on, and at the 34-yard line, punting the football, this is something they work on. Take that high when you try to cover. John Jett. We'll try to feather one. And it bounces at the five and is down at the four. So Jet does his job. Interception does not hurt the Cardinals, but they are pinned deep with 12.39 of the half. It was being brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. The 1996 Chrysler Cirrus. And Bud Light, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. Make it a Bud Light. You know, luck just follows good football teams around. That ball's headed for the end zone, and it inadvertently, inadvertently hits the form of Charlie Williams. And the Cardinals start with horrendous field position. That ball didn't take the bounce Jet wanted, but the result was exactly what he wanted. Cardinals at their own five-yard line, and Garrison Hurst. Picks up a yard or two. He's tackled there by Dot Free Miles, the middle linebacker. Cardinals, well, for years it was Jim Hart and Neil Lomax, but look at that. 88 Lomax made the most starts at QB, then Hogeball, Rosenbaum, Tufa, Chandler, Burline, Schrader, and now Craig. Eight different quarterbacks over the last eight years, and next year, you can count on it being nine. I, I think you're right about that. The one that really threw them was Rosenbaum who they invested a number one draft choice in and then just retired, walked away from the game as a complete surprise to the franchise. Second down and eight. And the catch made over the middle and up to the 25-yard line for a first down goes Larry Centers, who is now one catch away from tying Roger Craig for most catches by a running back in the history of the National Football League in any one season. You know, that graphic we just saw, guys, uh, the magnitude of that has to set in. That is an extraordinary, uh, I don't want to call it a, an achievement, it, it's a disaster <laughs> that you've had that many different people playing quarterback successively. It, mm -hmm. I, I, it's got to be unparalleled in the NFL. Number 91 for Sitters. First down of the 25-yard line. And Larry Sitters has just caught his 92nd pass of the season. Deion Sanders with the tackle, and that ties the mark. Centers a pro bowler, a mark set by Roger Craig with San Francisco the year he won over 1,000 yards both in rushing and receiving most catches for a running back in the history of the NFL. And there they are, Craig and Centers right now, and clearly Centers will be at the very top by himself before this game is done. Derek LaVille this year caught 87 at San Francisco, and they want to take that ball out of play. <laughs> and not to diminish anything that Larry Centers has done, but he's he's got 254 yards rushing. It, I just want to emphasize what an extraordinary year Roger Craig had in 85 when he put that 1,000-1,000 year together. Yep. It's also a new Cardinal team record as Centers carries for no gain. That broke the mark of 91 held by J.T. Smith, the wide receiver. Godfrey Miles makes the tackle here. So Larry Centers putting his name into the record book on his way to Honolulu for the Pro Bowl. 
Miles filling in, as we mentioned earlier, for the injured Robert Jones. And Dan was talking about prescriptions for this Dallas football team. Stopping that on second and short, uh, that's a pretty good prescription. They have been giving up a lot of yards from a lot of different teams on the ground. And that time they stuffed that pretty good. Moving Leon Lett back inside help. That's helped a lot. Third oh, short. Good look at it right there, too. Yeah. That's how you that's how you play the run by Leon Lett. Get underneath the pads of the guy trying to root you out and put a shoulder on the ball carrier. Centers didn't get it. Way down 17 to nothing. What do you do? Uh, the punting team is halfway out onto the field. Buddy Ryan is probably waiting to see how far it is. Larry Center's injured somehow. Take a look. There's Lett 78. Look how he gets up, fights in. Puts the initial hit on the ball carrier. Strong play inside by Leon Lett. And they had been using him out when Dan alluded to it, out on the outside at the end because of the various injuries along that defensive line, and he just was not that effective out there. Well, they're trying to come up with an in impact player on the edge. Tony Tolbert on the edge on the other side of defensive end has two bad knees. Charles Haley had the surgery on his disc. He may or may not be back in time to play in the Super Bowl. And they're just trying to get some impact on the outside. And putting Leon out there wasn't the answer. Mm -hmm. Larry Centers angry as he walks off the field. Fourth down and the length of the football. And Jeff Beagles, the NFC's Pro Bowl punter to kick. Kevin Williams and Deion Sanders are both back team. And it's a short floating kick. And the fair catch is called for and made at the 29-yard line by Deion. And that's where the Cowboys and Aikman take over with 9.57 remaining in the half. In Arizona, where it's the Cowboys 17, the Cardinals something. Christmas night in the uh, Valley of the Sun. And boy, it was the Valley of the Sun today. Beautiful day. <laughs> Temperature in the upper 60s. As you look at the, the Phoenix area, we're in Tempe, which is just southeast of the city limits. Thank you, King Kong Bundy, for letting us use your head. <laughs> <laughs> First down. <laughs> Cowboys at their own 29-yard line. Is that Daniel Benz out? Yes. And it's Smith for a first down, 13-yard gain, a roll down by Garth Jacks. And it's Smith. What a block by Daryl Johnson. You've got to get somebody to seal the perimeter. There's the moose on the corner. Look at that. He gets the double hit. No wonder Emmett Smith has had such a productive career. He's he's a talented individual, but he gets wonderful blocking by Daryl Johnson out in front of him. First and ten at the 41-yard line. Smith the other way. Exploits the middle for a gain of about five. Bernard Wilson makes the tackle with a little more than nine minutes to go in the half. And again, to, to set it for Dallas, if they win tonight, they have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, and what that would mean is that if they were to play the 49ers in the NFC Championship game, it would be in Irving, Texas. It also would mean that they would not have to face Green Bay in that second round game. They would face either Atlanta, if they beat Green Bay, or the winner of the Detroit-Philadelphia game. From the 47-yard line, this play is dead before its inception. I think 10 guys knew the snap count, and Derek Kennard didn't. <laughs> they, uh, they all were moving, and the ball wasn't. He's got that sort of shame look, doesn't he, when he walks back there. doesn't want to look at anyone. <laughs> Ernie Zampezi, the offensive coordinator, looking off from high above. And I mean high above. The interesting thing here <laughs> is that the center does not go into the record book or the play-by-play. -play. A center can't be offside. So it's, he's, uh, you know, he's uh, by the... Uh, he's a control. By the letter of the law, he's blameless there. <laughs> somebody, else, somebody else made a false start. Second down nine from the 42-yard line. Aikman guns it to... Kevin Williams, and he's tackled at the 48-yard line. He almost ran back and uh, lost what would have been a first down, and I think he still has enough. Uh, he's close. He's really close. very close. He had the first down, and he tried to break break it back to the inside for additional yardage, and he's going to be right on the marker. Okay. 
I just call Paul McGuire. I think he has it. He is pretty good at that, isn't he? He's it? very good at that. By the nose of the ball. I like that. And he is on the coverage, and he forced him to go back to the inside. I'd try to make a guess from here, but I can't see the football from this <laughs> Tell move. me about it. <laughs> we, we are looking down onto the blimp. It is a first down. There is not a... Uh, there is Hold not... All the way back. That is a three-story structure uh -huh. that's built on top of the upper deck here at the Sun Devil Stadium, and uh, only he of the keen eye can see what's going on down on the field from up here. Hey, what do you expect for a billion dollars in rights, please? First down at the 48-yard line. scored one all season and now has two tonight. Big night for Williams and they continue to double up on Michael Irvin and perhaps because of the confidence they gained in Williams last week against the Giants they are looking for him tonight and finding him big time. He can put some moves on him and he gets his hands on the football too. Good return man of course and a nifty runner after he catches the football. Dangerous runner. A pure zone defense by the Cardinals. Williams right in the void. Again, you see Alexander slipping. He's the first guy there. Should have been the primary guy to make the hit. He falls down, and the hit doesn't come until the one-yard line. Bonyol knocks it through, and with 7.31 to go in the first half, the Dallas Cowboys doing exactly what they had wished for and hoped for on this Christmas evening, winning and winning convincingly. the look of the Cardinals uh, tonight and for most of the season. Seth Joyner and company uh, getting routed to this point. And a very happy Kevin Williams with no touchdowns in his first 15 games and a pair tonight coming off his best game of the season and best of his career last week. I believe it's his first 100-yard game. Mm -hmm. That 113 he has to this point. Long way to go as well. Six-yard line drop picked up by LaShawn Johnson. And a nice tackle by Charlie Williams. So on offense and defense and special teams with a flag down, the Dallas Cowboys sparkling tonight. Joe <laughs> You can't, when you're a special teams coach, you, you break down those films, and regardless of the score, you have got to stay on your guys. You can't allow them to lose their edge. And Joe is not, he's, he's beseeching them to stay in this thing. Billy Davis for the penalty. You know, we talked before about, yep, right there, there it is. is. Good call. About everybody expecting, you know, Barry Switzer to come back, but with all of the speculation, it's funny, I did the interview with Jerry Jones before the game, and then I'd mentioned to a couple of the assistant coaches, including Joe on the field before the game, that Jerry said he is back unconditionally. And they reacted with glee. It's almost as if they were wondering themselves, and this was the affirmation, the 27-yard line. They believed you? Complete, they, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the funny thing is, <laughs> right, I didn't want to tell them, you know, it's Christmas night, <laughs> that we were just kidding around. But it shows you how, you know, how tenuous everybody's position is in a situation where, you know, Barry Switzer has been getting some heat. You don't know what he's going to do or what Sunny. Jerry Jones is going to do. Yeah, well, he's been getting heat from the outside, and then Jones says it, and Jim Eddy is another guy in your picture there, and Dave Campo, they were they were ecstatic. They're just up there now going, man, can you believe what Al told us down there before they... <laughs> Second and ten. They're high-diving each other. <laughs> Garrison Hurst up past the 40 to the 44-yard line. All, all kidding aside, Al, your point's very well made. This is a... This is a tenuous business at best, and especially being the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. No uh, no bigger pressure cooker, in, uh, certainly in the NFL. And the assistant's very happy to know that the affirmation comes in the form of Jerry Jones on Monday Night Football saying he is back regardless of, is, is an important thing to the, to the assistants. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the relationship between uh, Barry Switzer and, and Troy Aikman and... and whether or not they are close, whether it's strained, whether it's a good working relationship. Fake reverse. 
And Dave Craig goes down. He's sacked again. Darren Smith is there. That's something you don't see often from the Dallas Cowboys, a sack from their linebackers. They don't blitz that much to begin with. But at that time, that was a coverage sack, too. Dave Craig had no place to put that football. He's getting the play called in by Dave Atkins, and he looks at the corresponding information on his wrist, and this is the result. Craig, after getting sacked for the 476th time in his career, hands to Darius and Hurst for a minimal game. Yeah, the funny thing about a guy like Dave Craig, he's had all of these sacks. He is the NFL record holder in fumbles, and yet when you look at the whole thing, when you play it out, it's amazing to think this man has thrown more touchdown passes in his career than has John Elway. And not only that, but he has a career rating that's higher than uh, the vast majority of quarterbacks that have ever played this game. He, uh, his numbers, his cumulative numbers over the years are, uh, and in some sense, is uh, very, very large. His ratio, touchdowns, interception. Dan, you like that? Figure is 247 to 185. Third and 13, and Larry centers the new record holder by himself now. Most catches <laughs> by a running back, and uh, he lets Dion have a piece of his mind on his way to the record book. Either that or he's trying to get an autograph. It, was he angry at Dion? Dion no. just went down like uh, a mole, and he tripped over it. Well, Dion rolls off in coverage, and then all of a sudden looks upfield, and this is not what he wanted to see where he had to come in and make the tackle. And, of course, Dion not wrapping up, just going more or less for the chop block. Center is being congratulated by his teammates. This is a, a really something that centers, if he'd have seen Dion coming, could have really, I think, high-stepped over the top of him. Is he concerned about him going after his knees? I guess so. Uh, obviously, that's what he was upset about, saw who it was, and had second thoughts about it. I'm well, not going to mess with $35 million man. He didn't go after his knees. No. Dion was on the ground way in front of center. First and 10 at the... 43-yard line, the deep drop, the screen to Garrison Hurst is good, blocking out in front, but all of a sudden that breaks down, and down he goes at the 36-yard line, Dixon Edwards with the tackle. It's a gain of six. Garrison Hurst finally coming all the way back from the knee surgery he had as a rookie and becoming what they thought he would be when they took him the first round and 93 out of Georgia. Had a great career there. Problem this year with fumbles. He fumbled 12 times over the last few games. Uh, that really hurt the Cardinals, and they've lost six of their last seven. And Garrison's had a hard time holding on to the football. That's the first catch tonight by a Cardinal not made by centers, and it also tells you no wideout has caught a pass tonight. Nor a tight end. And that's incomplete, intended for the wideout Rob Moore, covered by Sanders. Now Dave Craig got in trouble with the play clock. He wanted to make a change. He tried to make a change, looked up, and he was down to two in the play clock and uh, just poorly timed out between he and Rob Moore, who, by the way, is having a terrific year here, Rob Moore. Over 60 receptions. Uh, came from the Jets last year in a trade. Got to wonder about Rob Moore. I don't think he ought to buy a lottery ticket going from the Jets to the Cardinals. Not exactly upward mobility. <laughs> There's the football that uh, Larry Centers caught to set the record. Most catches by a running back. 93. It's third down and three. And Craig from the gun with protection. Centers makes his 94th catch. That's the best, including anything we've ever seen by Ronaldo Nehemiah. Well, that was over Larry Brown, but he had to be thinking a moment ago when he should have hurdled Deion Sanders. Edwin Moses this is, lives. This is shades of Randall Cunningham, if you want to bring it into the football realm. Larry Brown That's, is sort of a, where where'd you go? Larry Brown never left his feet. It's a, we saw him get tripped up by Dion on the ground. I don't think Larry Brown ever even leaves his feet. Now he's thinking he's going to cut block me. I'm going over him. <laughs> he cleared Larry Brown and didn't touch him. Yeah, he did finally. Larry Brown did go down. What a leap by centers. First and goal now from the seven. First. And he 
gets down to the two and a half, three yard line. Flag comes in at the end of the play. And let's take a look at this high centers of gravity one more time. <laughs> Defying gravity is more like it. Keep in mind, he's a pretty big man, too. He goes about 215, 217. He is way up over Larry Brown. What a incredible effort. I'm sure the fact that Deion Sanders cut him down a few moments ago, that put it into his mind. <laughs> Look at Larry Brown. He doesn't want to make of it. I don't think they ever, they ever even touched, did they? I'm not sure he even grazed his shoulder pad with his shoe tip on I the way by. He Here's where the Cardinals have had a problem, getting the ball into the end zone there. Down in that red zone, they've had a tough time scoring from down here. Wouldn't you be tempted to let Larry Sanders leap? Penalty was against the Cowboys, so... There's no play, it's first and goal. And the catch is not made by centers. He couldn't hang on to it. Well, Dave, Dave, was covering. Dave Craig put some smoke on that ball. He's rolling out to the right and he's got centers and Dave winds up and throws a bullet to centers. Actually, he wasn't in a bad place. Yep. He just had no, too much no. on it. It was in the perfect place. He never controlled it. You know, this is this is a pretty remarkable feat by centers of catching it. You're right. The officials were correct in not giving him the catch. Second and goal. Garrison Hurst. Hurst, amazingly this season, over a thousand yards, he has one rushing Here touchdown. One. Now the Cardinals don't have a whole lot of the team. Well, they, the, 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 the uh, what, they have three as a team? <laughs> three as a team. Emmett Smith has 24. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that tells you something about which team has a winning record uh, and which I, I team has a I think 25 uh, total touchdowns and five of them have been scored by the defense. Inside the 10-yard line, only a 38% conversion mm -hmm. percentage for the Cardinals. Last in the league. Meanwhile, let's take a look at centers again. Ooh. That's well. just now with the ball hitting the ground. I I think the official makes the right call. I don't see how he could have called it any other way. And we have come to the two-minute warning. Third and goal when we come back. You will be treated to a halftime. Two minutes left in the first half at Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. Twelve play of the drive coming up for the Cardinals. And it's third down and goal as they try to somehow scramble back into the fray. They're down 24 to nothing. And if you're Dave Campo, the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys, these are the types of stands you'd like to make to really get your team feeling good about itself on the way into the playoff. Third and goal. Craig. To the end zone tip, deflected and incomplete. And luckily for Craig, not intercepted. Tipped initially by Godfrey Miles. So fourth down, and they send in Davis in the field goal unit. You know, you probably hear more booing being 24 to nothing, uh, down 24 to nothing, but I, I would say that about half of these people are Cowboy fans. I'm talking to one of the Cardinal coaches. He said, looked around the stadium and said, we may have to put the silent count in tonight. Rob Moore actually saves the interception. Davis 21-yard field goal effort is good. Campos defense stiffens. And with 150 to go in the half, it's 24-3 Dallas. You can't hold, go home again, Al. Yeah, right. Well, that's where I used to skip a lot of classes. Somewhere down there. Called your first football game here? Absolutely. 1962 from the Goodyear Blimp, a shot of Tempe on the campus of Arizona State from the Goodyear Blimp Eagle. And which one of those cubby holes down there did you buy the racing for? <laughs> Turf Paradise with a 45-minute <laughs> drive from the campus. <laughs> Great place for long shots. Still is. Here's the kick taken down to the five-yard line by Kevin Williams. And he brings it back up to the 25-yard line. And he's tackled by Marcus Dow. Dallin, let's get a report from Lynn Swan. Well, well, Al, you know, this is a great shot of Dan. I, I assume, Dan, that you'll always be a Cardinal deep in your heart. Is, is this really you? Yes, it really is, Swanee. It was, uh, you know, they didn't change the uniforms. They changed the cities, but uh, they did not change the uniform. 
And that was about the last time we had a winning team, too, <laughs> when that card was taken. They have, uh, uh, winning seasons have been lean since the, uh, since the 70s. Mm. 84, 84 was the last. How they score the first Cardinal Dallas game on Monday Night Football? 38-0. Uh, the Big Red. Here's Aikman throwing too deep for Michael Irvin. That really, uh, that was the game where uh, uh, Don Once had again, quite a meltdown during the course of that. Uh, that was 1970, I think. It was, ooh, and Eric Williams, not a good sign for the Cowboys here as it's time to get serious. I think everybody knows about Eric and the automobile accident that he had last year, missed the balance of the season last year and came back earlier than expected. Has it been quite the dominant performer he was before he got hurt? And uh, Ron Stone, the guy that would come in and back him up, but you got to keep your fingers crossed that this is nothing serious for Big Eric Williams. It was the knee that was damaged in that automobile accident that underwent a lot of repair during the offseason, and he did return for the opening game this year against the Giants. So Williams getting up good sign an excellent good sign for, for the Cowboys as he walks there he is on the right side there's 79 let's oh it looks like he gets kicked on the right ankle by one of his own teammates somewhere there on the right lower leg that's even a better sign that the knee didn't buckle right so Dan right. you were saying Don had a meltdown and I'm sitting here thinking Don Coriel or Don Meredith Don Meredith oh, Don, Don Meredith. Meredith oh no no the Cardinals uh, beat the Cowboys 38 nothing mm -hmm. and Don of course doing Monday night football at the time. Uh, yeah, he'd give him the points. He felt vexed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, good, Frank. <laughs> he was really into it. That was, uh, he loved his Cowboys. You know what I'm talking about. He suffered that night. I want to hear you. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear you get out of this one. Yeah, well, he had the over as well. That was the bad news. Second down and 10 from the 26-yard line. And the catch is made up at the 30 by Eric Bjornsson, the tight end. And the Cardinals take a timeout here because they anticipate getting the ball back and they try to conserve some of the clock. A buck 32 left in the half. The Dallas Cowboys wrapping up the regular season. The playoffs begin this Saturday. Both playoff games Saturday, Miami against Buffalo and Philadelphia against Detroit. Right here on ABC. Eric, Eric Williams, Williams back in the game. Ah, boy, that's great news. Third down four from the 32-yard line, and they give it to Kevin Williams on his second carry of the night, and he comes close to picking up a first down. This will be turning into a less feature Kevin Williams night. A couple of reverses, a couple of touchdown passes, and a first down. And now Arizona provided a little break for the uh, Cowboys by calling that defensive timeout on the last play. As the Cowboys now have plenty of time to work their way into scoring range with a minute to go in the half. Aikman with great protection. Throws, catch made by the tight end Bjornsson. And the uh, rookie knowing to run out of bounds here to conserve the timeout. He's out of bounds and has the first down at the Arizona 48. Cardinals yeah. choosing a unique defensive concept there, Frank. Uh, not even covering Bjornsson. It's uh, guaranteed to uh, be a successful conversion for the offense. All you have to do is, is find him. You'll be able to spot him. He's out there in the flat all by himself. Bjornsson uh, filling in for Jay Novacek. Uh, should the Cowboys move through the playoffs? They'll probably get Novacek back. He had orthoscopic surgery a couple of nights ago and is already out and around and feeling pretty good about it. At the 48-yard line. Aikman, Emmett Smith. Emmett seeking that first down. He's close, but he's able to stop the clock and gets uh, some assistance on the sideline to prevent him going into the chain link fence. Emmett, who's been bothered by a strained quadricep. That's the thigh muscle on his right leg. And uh, every time he carries it now, especially... When you see him have to come to an awkward stop like this, when he goes out of bounds, you have to worry about it because, you know, mm. that's when you're a little off balance. And boy, there's uh, some help from a friend when you need it. Especially in this stadium where uh, there's not a lot of room between the sideline and the fence. Second and inches. Smith 
First down to the 33-yard line. And now the Cowboys will take a timeout with 41 seconds remaining in the half, and the Cowboys have one remaining, leading 24-3. Troy Aikman, 179 yards in the first half, which is 41-6 remaining, first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Everybody yelling he was off, but there's no flag as Williams makes the catch at the 23-yard line. A lot of jumping up front, but no penalty. Cowboys conserving their final timeout. They move the chains first and 10 at the 22-yard line. So Dallas already in field goal range, and now looking for more. Smith, wide open, flag down, stopped at the 9, and the clock stops with 16 seconds remaining. Boy, did Emmett dig himself a furrow down around the 10 yard line when he planted to cut back to his right. Well, that was flag came late. It should be in the coverage against the Cardinals. There's the uh, there's the hole that uh, that Emmett dug when he tried to plant and cut back across, and it's remarkable he kept his feet. Illegal hands in the face. Defense number 21. Finley is declined. First down. Lance Brown, rookie out of Indiana, 14-yard gain. And the Cowboys still have a timeout left, so they can take a couple of shots at the end zone. Here's Emmett Smith, and we can count on the fact right there is that big First chunk of sod he threw out of there. Line. And if the Cowboys get a couple whacks at it, I can only assume that Barry Switzer is going to give the ball to Emmett Smith both times. He would love to get Smith that record before halftime. That was a great look at the balance of one Emmett Smith. Trip right, and they break that formation and Irvin goes to the left and there's a whistle before the play as Clyde Simmons he actually intercepted that ball well, well the, the Cardinals were they had multiple people across the ball that was a good illustration of the 46 chaos and disruption offside defense unabated to the quarterback the snap five yard pitch, first down and that happens a lot. An interesting thing there is uh, the clock operator, sensing what was happening, never started the clock. Mm -hmm. There's still 16 seconds showing. And it's a half the distance penalty, so they're at the four now. So now Emmett gets two really good whacks at it, I would think. Well, if they, if they have only one timeout left. There it is. Interestingly, most touchdowns in the season, each of those guys scored all of their touchdowns on the ground, no reception. The scores. The first and goal. He fumbled all things, and the Cardinals get it. Eric Swan comes up with the ball and hadn't been tackled, and then takes off like Lynn Swan. I think that might have been the center and once again. Is it Kenneth Williams? Williams is blowing his back. Blowing all over oh yeah, this, this thing never got started. I think that might have been Kennard again. Uh, at least Aikman was pulling away from the center, and well, Kennard's yeah, he's not, shaking his head. If he's not at fault, he was certainly lying on the ground like it was his fault, trying to bury his face in the turf, tr trying to burrow underneath that side and make it all go away. Aikman anticipating the ball, it pulled away from Kennard. Hmm. Well, I think Barry Switzer, one of the things he didn't like about that is he'd like to have gotten Emmett Smith out of this game after he got the record and just killed him. Barry, Kennard snapped the ball on time. It just never made it to Aikman's yeah. hands. Yeah. For some reason, you could see it go off to the side. He snapped it when Troy wanted it, but it he just didn't deliver it. Again, the, the loss of Ray Donaldson in many ways... Uh, Makes this cowboy cowboy offensive line not the line it was at midseason. Kennard, of course, started last year, but he started to right guard for them. Now, with, with 12 seconds left, the Cardinals somehow are going to try to get into field goal range. Of all things, the catch is made by Stevie Anderson, and they look around and they questioningly ask for a timeout. Well, maybe they'll give Davis a good whack at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Merry Christmas, Fred Musburger. What's up at the half? 
Al, thank you very Brandon, much. Brandon, we had some beauties this year, starting on opening night when the Cowboys began our 26th year of Monday Night Football, so impressively against the Giants. And then we saw them in midseason, and they routed Philadelphia. And clearly, they were the best team in the league at that point. San Francisco missing Steve Young, among others. But that following week is when the Niners went in there. Jerry Rice caught the early touchdown pass and changed the whole season around. So the Cardinals, well, with six seconds to go, not only do they need a game, they need a defensive penalty. And all that does is add to Larry Center's record, and the handful end as he takes it up to the 34-yard line. End of the first half, all Dallas. They lead it 24 to 3. We'll return after this message from the National Football League and a word from our ABCs.